Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, 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 everyone back to another incredible episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Mr. Matt Hinshaw, out in Prescott, Arizona, where it is almost June and it is cold and rainy again. And with me, as always, my good buddy, who is probably experiencing better weather than me. I don't know. I didn't look it up. I don't really care. Mr. Mysterious Mike Talent. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, weather's a little bit warmer than where you're at. Dude, it's weird. It's real weird. Like, uh, your alma mater got uh, snow, and they were contemplating opening up Snowball again, but they didn't. They just opened up the lift for people to go and check it out and stuff. Wow, they got that much snow, enough to like maybe have skiing? Yeah, it was only like four or five inches, but they thought about it. I'll put it that way. Wow. Wow. So, Mike, how are things? Uh, things are good. Uh, it's been real busy, man. I've been really, really busy going all over the place, uh, traveling to different places, and and it's it's good to be back. Yeah, how many more vacations have you been on this time? Uh, I don't... I, n- 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 none this week. Wow, I caught you that off guard, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, wait, what am I supposed to answer? I'm not sure. Okay, so Mike, uh, I guess we'll just dive right into it. We are talking about a superhero movie again. (laughs) Yes, we are. And everyone hates how much we talk about superhero movies. Well, actually, no. I think only the crotchety old people that I'm friends with hate superhero movies. And I don't care because I like them. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So, so... People don't like that we talk about superhero movies. It's it's kind of we're always comparing movies to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or at least trying to find people. Why wouldn't they want to listen to that? It's fun. Well, I'm just talking about the crotchety old people that are my friends here that don't listen to podcasts, let alone go to movies or superhero movies. On top of it, well, what's wrong with superhero movies, man? I don't have a problem with them. I enjoy them very much. Yeah, I feel like uh, they've already made everything that they possibly can make, and so now they've moved on to comic books, and it's great. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's, uh, you know, there's levels of overload here and there, but the uh, variety of stories that we are getting are very widespread, and it's funny that it took now for comic book movies and TV shows to really kind of get accepted, I guess. Because these aren't the first comic book movies they've made. I mean, there's been, you know, Batman 66 was a TV show. They had a Captain America movie in the 80s. I mean, they've had Wonder Woman was a TV show, Hulk, you know, but it just seems like now it's more accepted than ever. And I'm not sure why. Yeah, I think it's because of uh, the, the nerds are cool, Matt. I wish that was true, Mike. I am still not cool. What? You didn't get the memo? No, I did not. Oh, man. Was it with my winning lottery ticket? Because I haven't found that either. You know what? I think it was. I think it was It was packaged together. Uh, you know, I guess the mail lost it, right? Maybe I should have sent it certified. Or through Amazon. Oh, yeah. Amazon would have gotten it there. Yeah, not not the, the U.S. Postal Service. Yep, they would have gotten it here in two days. <laughs> yeah. Two days. And sometimes one day. Well, anyways, Mike, so we are talking about yet another awesome superhero movie, but it is not a traditional superhero movie. It is also not in the vein of the MCU. It is in the vein of the DC universe, but to my knowledge, it has zero ties to it whatsoever. But uh, there's a lot of hints for sure. And uh, so, Mike, go ahead Give us the rundown on Brightburn. All right. Yeah, so we're reviewing uh, Brightburn, and it was directed by David Yaroveski. Uh, It's written by Brian Gunn and Mark Gunn, 
And the reason those names sound familiar is uh, the producer of this is James Gunn, who directed Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. Uh, it's starring Elizabeth Banks, uh, David Denman, uh, Jackson A. Dunn, and what if another child? Uh, what if a child from another world crash landed on Earth? But instead of becoming a hero to mankind, he proved to be something far more sinister. All right, so Mike, you are the horror movie buff out of the two of us. I, I have said it many times. I'm not a super huge fan of horror movies, but I do respect them. There are a handful out there that I really do enjoy, but you're the uh, de facto horror movie guy. So kick it off, man. What did you think of Brightburn? Uh, I liked Brightburn quite a bit. And I know it's kind of hard to classify this movie. And I think it's kind of like a, a, a superhero movie that has horror elements. I wouldn't necessarily say it's completely horror. Uh, it it's just got there's there's moments of uh, graphic uh, graphic violence. So uh, I don't know. I think this is more suspenseful. I think it's more like a thriller. Thriller, yeah. I think it's more thriller like. But it, it I could see how you would say it was a horror. I don't know. I don't know, man. I still put it kind of in that vein of horror because it's still dealing with something that is not natural and people are being killed kind of at random, but not at super random. And they're being killed in really horrific ways without the murderer batting an eye, which is interesting that we will get into later on in the spoiler section of our discussion. Yeah, yeah. Um but uh, I I enjoyed this movie. I did enjoy it. I I think it did all right this weekend. Um, apparently, Aladdin made Disney just more and more money. So they're just doing fine. Don't worry about Disney people. Well, Mike, speaking of making more and more money or less and less money and making me cry and turn to this, Mike, what are you drinking today? <sighs> oh, uh, that's a good question, Matt. Uh, there was a sale on over at the local grocery store. So uh, it was uh, buy one, get one, six packs of Landshark Lager. So uh, I I got a, you know, 12, 12 pack of Landshark for, for the price of one. And Landshark is what, Mike? It's a lager. It's a lager. All right. All right. You didn't get their IPA. No, no, no. I don't think they make a Land Shark IPA. I don't know, man. I don't know. I figured you if they did, you'd find it. <laughs> I guess that's true. No, no, it's just a lager, man. Just an easy drinking, uh, you know, kind of like a Corona type beer. Clear bottle and everything. Are you sure? Yes, it's not an IPA. Sure. Yes, I'm sure. All right, people, r- mark the date. Mark the date. Mike is not drinking an IPA. Yeah, you know, I, the sale, man, it was, it's like too good to pass up. That's what she said? Mm, yeah, probably. Well, Mike, I am also drinking a lager. What are you drinking, Matt? I'm drinking a Four Peaks Brewing Company golden lager. Oh, well, it's still, you know, it's Four Peaks. That's That's one of your favorite places. It is uh, definitely one of my favorite breweries. I really need to go over to Prescott Brewing and get myself a uh, um, a growler of uh, something, just so I can drink something local on this show. Yeah, Although they do sell cans and stuff, but I'd rather get it, you know, straight from the source. Well, do they have um like crowlers? Uh, it's basically a canned growler that they fill right there, and then they just seal it and give it to you. No, I haven't seen that. No. Okay. They do their own canning, though. So, I mean, you can... I could pick up a six-pack of something somewhere, but I'd rather just go there and just get a gallon of beer. It'd probably be about the same price as a six-pack. Uh, Yeah, it tends to be cheaper to get the... the um, usually, you order it in a half gallon or, or a gallon. So. Yeah, and there's, you know, I work right downtown. I could just walk over there on my lunch break and, you know 
get a bratwurst and a beer. Yeah, a uh, bratwurst and a gallon of beer. I mean, what else do you need? Me, personally, lots. Oh. I have lots of issues, but you know that. T- t- two gallons of beer? That, that's helping, yeah. All right, well. Um, One for each hand. <laughs> okay, cool. Got to keep everything balanced, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, Matt, you th- you thought this movie was um, horror-y, I guess? I don't I don't know how to say that in a like, I would say horror esque, yeah. I, w- I would think so. It's uh especially how it's shot in a lot of the scenes, it's very creepy. Um there's a handful of scenes that I just really liked. The cinematography was really well done. Uh also the um I guess it's kind of a spoiler, but not really. There's like a creepy dark voice that keeps calling out that really isn't explained. It keeps chanting something, and I'm not sure if that was his subconscious or if that was something else communicating with him. Yeah, I'm not sure. But, no, I would consider it definitely horror towards the end when um, it's in the trailers, people, so it's not a spoiler yet. When he's, like, ripping through the house and kind of torturing his mom. Okay. Okay. That All was right. definitely horror, if you ask me, for sure. Okay, I can see that. And then, obviously, you know the the couple of murders. Well, just the the two, like I don't want to say right off the start, but the first two he does. Um, those were definitely horror, but those are more. I don't know. I mean, how they came to be, they made sense, and why he did them. But the way that they did it and the way that they shot it, and especially the way that the uh, victims suffered. Oh, yeah. 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 Or were yeah. taken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's. Uh, yeah. I guess without spoiling too much, the, uh, I, it kind of makes sense because it's. It, this is somewhat of a coming age, a coming of age story. Uh, he just kind of. Heads the wrong direction. Yeah. Well, it's it's Superman if Superman was not good or did not have the ideals of the country or people that he landed in. Put first, I guess, is a good way to put it. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much a good description. Because, yeah, I mean, you know, there's no dancing around it. They don't blatantly say it, but this is the story of Superman. I mean, it takes place in Kansas. It takes place in a small town. The town's name is Brightburn. Granted, it's not the same name as Superman's hometown, but still, it's close enough. Yeah, yeah, no, it it it, it, it is supposed to be parallel, I think. This is just like, what if... It didn't quite go the same way. Right. And it's, uh, you know, same thing. A meteorite crashes into the uh, forest outside of a home of a couple that is trying to conceive a child and they are not able to conceive a child and they get lucky and find one hanging out in their forest and they take their responsibility on to uh, raise them as their own kind of thing. So, I mean, it is the story of Superman, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, Mike. Well, I don't know how much more you and I can really rant and rave about it without spoiling it, because even, like, the first death and murder is a huge spoiler for the rest of the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just do this. Mike, do you think people should go see this? Um... Yeah, I would recommend to go see this. Uh, you don't necessarily need to see this in the theater, but I did enjoy this movie quite a bit. I like the twist and and how the story kind of was, and the the family element seemed very you know genuine and stuff. So that was that was really nice. So, um, I would say you should see this, especially if you like comic books and you like horror. Like this is. This is right up your alley. If you like comic book stuff only, you might not like this as much because it's a, it's a lot darker view of stuff. A lot darker. 
So that's well, that's, I still would say people who are big comic book fans or superhero fans, because you don't have to be a comic book fan to be a superhero fan. I mean, there's lots of people that just love the MCU that are not comic book fans whatsoever. But it is a different take on the superhero genre, which has been done in the comic books multiple times over. Uh, not t- necessarily by the big two, but by some of the smaller ones, the big two being DC and Marvel. But uh, I definitely think if you are into superheroes in any way, shape, or form, you should see this. You probably don't have to see it in the theater. I think it's more impactful in the theater, though, because it's dark and it's a good place to see a horror movie. You're not distracted and the flying, you hear the flying, the sounds are just so much better. The It's just better. I, I don't know. Go see it in the theater. I think so. But Okay. Anyways, it's uh it it does what the it shows you that comic book characters and superheroes are not always the good guy and it's okay to go the other way and I know it sounds weird but some of my favorite comic books in the world are the what if slash uh, elseworld comic books in the Marvel universe they call them what ifs in uh DC they call them the elseworlds and it's usually stuff that's just zany and off the wall and it's usually done as a writing exercise or a drawing exercise for the different comic book artists to just do something different for a book or two. And I really like it because it lets them really stretch their imagination because believe it or not, in the comic book world, as zany and weird as it is, there's still things they got to stick to when they're writing the stories. When it comes to what if it's no holds barred. You write whatever you want. You want, like, there was one uh, where Batman, uh, my buddy uh, Dave Beatty, who's a comic book artist, um, was talking to me about it the other day, and I didn't even know about it. It was done, in, I think, in the 80s, when uh, Batman goes up against, I don't know if he goes up against or if he's hunting down uh, Jack the Ripper. Huh. That's an interesting plot line. Right. And it's just totally just out there but kind of interesting in a way so i don't know i like that kind of stuff and this is exactly what brightburn is it's off the wall kind of not off the wall but it's not expected it's the opposite of the marvel cinematic universe and the dc universe it's the exact opposite it's not someone doing good it's someone doing bad and it's almost more of like um like a quiet place or something like that, you know, uh, invading alien force that slowly wipes everybody out kind of thing. But it, instead of it being an alien force, it's a superhero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is. All right. So Mike, let's do it. Let's get on with the show. Mike, Mr. Talent, how does Brightburn relate? to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right. uh, Hey, Matt. uh, Thanks for asking. And uh, this one wasn't too much of a challenge. uh, Also, being that James Gunn helped produce this and his brothers wrote the script. Um. The director, David uh, Yervowski, is also in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, He plays uh, Gloth uh, Ravenger. Nice, man. Nice. I didn't know he acted, too. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And it might not be that he acts normally. It was just probably because he, you know, friends with James Gunn. So. Nothing's wrong with that. Yeah, uh, but uh, th- there's also James Gunn and and um, yeah. So uh, this one was pretty easy to relate back to the MCU, but uh, yeah. Well, all right, Mike. Good job. You keep your job going every week. I guess we'll have to keep you around. Yeah, yeah. At least for at least for one more week. Damn it! All right, Mike. Well. I guess I will start it off with the spoiler discussion. Okay. Of Brightburn. Dude, that first murder with the eye thing, 
I don't know, dude. I don't do like well with the eye thing. I don't do bad. Like I'm not one of those oh, people. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the, I, I wasn't sure how. Like it didn't bother me as much as I think it bothers a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people can't do the eye stuff. I'm not super great about the eye stuff because I'm a little bit more aware of my eyeballs and how to take care of them. And I probably should see an eye doctor every year, but I don't because uh, I rely on my eyeballs to make money. So if something happened to my eyes, I'd just be SOL. I really would. But that was just brutal, dude. It was brutal. It really was. I mean, I, you know, it was cringeworthy. There you go. Yeah, no, that was pretty brutal. And then uh, afterwards, and it starts bleeding. Ugh, that that was like the part that disturbed me. Oh, yeah. And then her eye, you know, they cut to the camera scene of looking through her eyes. And her, you know, half of the scene is red from her eye. Yeah. The blood. That was pretty, yeah, yeah. That's pretty smart, though. But again, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about earlier, but I couldn't because it ruins the story is the cinematography. I mean, that's just, you know genius sure it's just a little thing but it adds that much more to the story yeah that was pretty cool the first person uh view where uh, yeah like half of it's red because it's like it's bleeding out of the eye i'm like oh that's crazy yeah there's and there's there's lots of different scenes like that throughout that i really enjoyed i have to say though my favorite scene just uh not as like a uh a scene um, in the how what I, how I'm trying to figure out how the hell to phrase this. It's not like a a big scene. It's just a little scene, but it's a a very good cinematic moment that I like a lot. And I don't remember if it's the young girl or if it's her mom or if it's her aunt or something. And there, I think it's his aunt is doing something in the house. And maybe she's brushing her teeth, just something mundane. And there's no reason to pay attention to her whatsoever for what she's doing. And then if you pay attention, it's reminded me a lot of like hereditary. If you pay attention in the window is um, Brandon Byer floating in the window with his uh, red eyes. And I was just like, oh, that is so smart. That is so good. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was her... Uh... Just doing something like looking in the mirror or something. I don't know. Like Right. It was know, something like, very, very, very mundane and not a big scene. And it really didn't do a whole lot. But it it sent chills down your spine kind of thing. Because, I mean, it was just so good. And I think him having the red eyes helps a lot up the the creepy horror thriller factor of this movie for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I really like the scene with the truck and the lights not working, which I think he might have been controlling. But um, Oh, that's a good one. I was going to uh, actually ask you when I was thinking about watching this movie. Go ahead. Yeah, I just like that, that scene because it's like several instances where it's like he's there, like nothing's there, then he's there, then he's um, like floating. And then he's gone again, and then the character's like, oh, this is not good. This is not good. <laughs> like, he starts freaking out. Like, uh, I, I like that. It really helped build the suspense in that moment. That's good old Matt Jones from uh, Breaking Bad. He was in Breaking Bad. He played uh, Badger. Oh, yeah. He was in Breaking Bad. I was like, I recognized him from something. I couldn't remember what. You know what? I didn't even look that up. That was off the top of my head. Oh, good job, Matt. Good job. It's like we do this all the time. No, I just have uh, way, way, way too much useless information in my brain. Maybe if I had useful information, I could make a money. Nah, never mind. So, okay. So one of the scenes that I really enjoyed... God, I'm trying to think. There was just so many different unique scenes in this movie when it came to, like, the killings and the murders. Um, <laughs> I don't want to ruin the whole thing, but I, I guess I will, because, I mean, either you've seen it or you haven't kind of thing. But everybody knows Superman is bulletproof, and Brandon Byers bulletproof as well, and his dad 
takes him on a hunting trip and tries to pop him in the head and the bullet just bounces off. And then Yeah, yeah, he wasn't too happy about that. No, he was just oh, that was it. It was on. And then he just does one of the most horrific gruesome deaths in the whole freaking movie. He uses his laser eyes to basically blow his dad's head up. I mean, that was brutal. Yes. Yes, it was. It was really brutal. I mean, could you imagine Superman doing something like that? No, no, it was brutal, man. Like, the the death scenes, there's only a few of them in this movie, but, whoo, man, they're pretty intense. Uh, and then the, 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 the eyeball lady, you see her later, it didn't go well. No, no. And I was curious about that, too. I mean, do you think he was studying her to learn human beings anatomy to be a more efficient killer kind of thing uh i think there was something to that yes okay now here's the one i want to go back on when you were talking about the um the flashing lights and electricity that's one thing they never really explain because when uh uh brandon Breyer, played by jackson dunn shows up even like when he shows up to his aunt's house or something else and he's using his powers like the electricity flickers and cuts out and stuff do you think it's him controlling it or do you think it's a side effect of his powers uh i don't know it's a good question but when when uh when he's at his birthday party and he gets his present and his dad says he can't have it because he's too young uh all the video games and everything turns off like when he hits the table yeah, the whole place. Yeah, or like it flickers, the power flickers, I think. Right. And uh, I don't know. And that was just him getting angry, so I don't know. Yeah, see, I'm not sure. It, it doesn't really explain if it's tied to him using his powers or if he has the ability to control the electricity. That's one that I think should be explained. But I just want to ask that which way you thought it was. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Well, what about how he gets away with all these murders? What do you think of that? Did you think that was okay, or do you think that was a little, a little extreme that they're kind of stretching it a little bit? Well, I don't think he really got away with any of them. In fact, he even left a calling card. It just took um, the police a little bit to figure it out, and then by the time they do, it's kind of too late. Well, yeah, I mean, but he, again, spoilers, at the end, he's getting away with it all. He's still leaving his calling card everywhere. But, uh, you know, throughout the film, everything gets covered up by something or another. Like uh, his uncle that uh, you were talking about the car. He murdered him in his car. And it later gets blamed on because he was drunk. And so it was drunk driving. And then the whole thing at the end when he kills the police chief and he kills the other police officer and he kills just all these people at the house and he drops a jumbo jet on the place and kills everyone with the jumbo jet and it's just oh it's just a coincidence right yeah i i i don't know you're right yes it's all a coincidence it's just a weird coincidence i mean it's it's smart on his part to do that to cover the stuff up but it's still it's how much would these people really believe? I mean, because it keeps coming up where it's like, okay, you know, it was his uncle and then, you know, his other family member and this and that and over and over and over again. It's just like, no, no, it's the kid. You should recognize this the kid. But again, by the time someone starts figuring it out, he kills him. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And then it kind of leaves it open. And then uh, what did you think of the uh, the end there in the credits with uh, the YouTuber guy who's uh, uh, talking about conspiracies and stuff? Oh, dude, that was awesome. I love, uh, oh, gosh, now I'm spacing on his name. Sure, I got the other names all right. Is it Michael Roker? Yeah, Michael Roker. Yeah, I love Michael Roker. He is one of my favorite actors. I loved him in The Walking Dead. I've loved him in Guardians of the Galaxy. I've loved him in many, many movies. He's just a fantastic, fantastic character actor. I really like him. But I'm wondering, because, I mean, yes, he's a big name, but he is one of James Gunn's friends. 
But I'm wondering if that's teasing possibly leading into a sequel. You know, do you think they're going to have a sequel for Brightburn? I don't know. Um, I think it did okay as far as the the movie. I don't think it costs that much to make, so you never know. It might it might have another one. Well, it doesn't have a huge cast, which is a benefit. The only thing that probably costs much is doing all the digital effects. Yeah, I, I think that's probably one of the or the most expensive thing. I think the major actors in this work for a lot less than they normally do, and uh, they just wanted to do this project because it was neat and it was different. Yeah, and I mean, Elizabeth Banks, I think she did the best in this movie. I think she was just, her acting was incredible. It really was. She did a fantastic job. Yeah, no, she's really good. Um, she's also a good director. She's directed some stuff now, and she's she's just doing all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. She's oh, yeah. She actually hasn't been doing a lot of acting as of late because of the directing and the writing and things like that. Yeah, so and that was cool for her to get on this project. So uh, yeah, well, she what about a lot to it? What about Jackson Dunn? I thought he did a really good job being a creepy ass kid, and he's like the nice, sweet, defenseless kid at the beginning, and then he flips the switch, but he doesn't flip it like hard. He gradually grows into the sinister kind of you know superhero alien person. Yeah, no, I I I liked his acting acting uh, quite a bit. It was it was uh it was good. I I believed you know he was like just a normal kid, and then you know as he got older, things changed. To say the least, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all right, Mike. I had other questions, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. I'm drawing a blank. All right. I need to sleep uh, more, maybe. I don't know. All right. Well, that, that's okay. Um, well, what about you? Do you have anything about Brightburn that you, uh, you're you thinking about in the back of your head? Uh, no. No, no, no. I think, I think that's it. So we covered it all, huh? Yeah, I think so. Gosh, I'm just trying to remember. I had one, one last good one, and I've, I'm just drawing a blank on it. I sh- See, this is why I need to take notes like you. Are you still taking notes, or are you just going off your head now? No, I don't take notes too much. Usually the only notes I take are for what the MCU tie-in and, and, and who who uh, who they played in the that that movie or whatever their... If they were in a different position, whatever their position was. It's like sometimes there's like special effects and makeup people that are... They have different roles on different movies, but it's still kind of along the same lines. So, I just realized what my question was. You ready for it? Uh, okay. I think so. Do you think Brandon Breyer is a sociopath? Or do you think because he's from another planet and he thinks everyone is beneath him that... Um, it just doesn't matter. Their lives don't matter. So what I'm saying is, do you think he doesn't give a shit about killing people because he's superior to them? Or do you think he's just a sociopath? Like he just flat out has never cared about, you know, hurting other people. Um, I think he cares about uh, at least some of his family stuff. I'd say the other people know. But he... Due to the drive that he has to uh, burn it all down, he just appeases that, I guess. So so to pull from the Dark Knight, you feel that he is one of the guys that just wants to watch the world burn? Yes. See, now that, w- that was the question I was thinking, because I was thinking in the back of my head as I was watching this. So the reason why Superman does not hurt people and went the other way and helps people is because of the morality and things that his parents brought him up believing and knowing and understanding that you do good, that you help your fellow neighbor, you, you know, the, the traditional, you know, uh, good things. Do you think that this just shows you that even if 
you're brought up properly, it can go the other way? Or do you think Brendan Breyer is just, it's that it's like built into his race? So, Matt, this comes down to the age old question of nature versus nurture. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, man. I- I was expecting like some big kind of thing, especially how you introduced that. And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> that was good. That was good, Mike. Yeah. Because, um... I mean, clearly in this one, Elizabeth Banks and David Denham are also raising their son, Jackson Dunn, to be good and moral and all those things. But it doesn't work out. He goes the other way. And he goes the other way at a fairly young age. He's what, like 12? I think he's in this movie. He's yeah, supposed to be 12. Yeah, yeah. He's he's 12. His his 12th birthday was the birthday. So, yeah, he's 12. So, maybe his race hits puberty and that's it. They decide that they want to take over the world. Or maybe it was that voice we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. That's another mystery thing that we're not exactly sure. Is it... Is it the spaceship talking to him, or is it his race communicating with him? Since there's this, there's alien things in this. Um, I don't know. It it was, it was like at first when it was talking to him, he couldn't translate it, but like over time, he figured it out, which was weird. But right, well, especially since it's a language he, no one has ever heard before. But maybe it was just built into his DNA somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Do you want to see a a sequel to this movie, Mike? I would like to see where they would take it. Yeah. I personally would like to see a sequel as well. Um, You could go many different ways with a sequel. I mean, you really could. You could go where he just takes over the entire world and just destruction and, you know world triumph and just murdering people everywhere or you could go another way where we start getting a story of maybe his brother or his uncle or his cousin or whatever comes down to earth and stops him and they're a superhero too or maybe it's just completely separate and it's another superhero that comes out of nowhere from another planet or something or not even a planet just you know whatever superhero thing and goes up against him. I mean, there's just endless possibilities. If you wanted to stay with the, the horror scarier side, I probably would go with the uh, apocalypse method, but I, I, yeah, definitely think, I don't know. Yeah. I definitely think there's a lot more material here that they could grow on and expand and especially where he came from and why and stuff like that. Cause even in the original Superman, they go into stuff like that and where he came from in this, they just, they don't explain it at all. Yeah, you're right. But I think they were just trying to keep the mystery going. And, and, you know, if, if you did want to go towards the apocalypse route or whatever, the budget would probably have to increase quite a bit. And I don't, I don't know what they kind of want to do, but I did like this kind of, we saw him kind of being made and he changed before our eyes, but it was just like it kind of smaller things. I mean, it was kind of quick, but it was still kind of smaller things here and there. And it just kept getting worse. Like the, the chicken stuff and, and, and breaking that girl's hand. Oh man, that was brutal. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah. So it's just, ah, you know, yeah, I'm just saying there is so much more they could do if they really want to explore this world, if, you know, the Gun Brothers want to do this. But I don't know. We'll see. I mean, maybe it was a success. Maybe it's not enough for the studio. Who knows? I enjoyed it. I would go and see a sequel, especially if it expands a, a lot more on it. Yeah, yeah, it'd be neat. But speaking of quick, you know, one thing that was nice is this was a solid hour and a half. Like, no questions, ifs, ands, or buts. It didn't feel too long. It definitely was a slow burn at the beginning, but uh, the runtime was great. I loved it. Yeah, no, it came right in, I think, at 90 minutes. So, yeah, that was good. All right, Mike. So how many reels do you give Brightburn? Uh, I think I'm going to give Brightburn three and a half reels. 
Well, all right then. Fine. Somebody didn't like it as much as I did, and I'm not a oh. horror movie person. Oh, you you giving it four? Yes, sir. I am giving it four out of five reels. Nice, man. I, you know I'm super harsh. <laughs> you say that, and then movies that I just hate, you love. I don't get it. Re- Return of uh, uh, Mike Mike uh, Harsh Talent. Uh, Mike Harsh Talent. Mike Mean Talent. Yeah, Mike Mean Talent. Sorry, Mean Mike Talent. Ooh, Mean Mike Talent. That's that's that sounds almost like a wrestler name. It does. It does. I was just thinking the same thing. I was like, that's almost like Mean Gene. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, Mike. I have not looked at what is coming out next week. So, what are we going to talk about next week? Do you know? I'm sure there's some big movie. Um, there is, I think there's two movies that we might be interested in seeing. Oh, um, you know what comes out? And I know we're going to have to go see it. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Dark Phoenix comes out. Is that next week? Yeah. Oh, Dark Phoenix. Yeah, we got to see that. Uh, there's something else, Matt. Uh, Godzilla comes out this week. Rocket Godzilla, Man. I, Rocket Man. Yeah. I do want to see rocket man i i don't know about godzilla i'm not sure about that everybody thinks it's going to be huge but i think the only thing it really has going for it as of right now for me is the cast uh i like the last uh godzilla with uh brian cranston uh who's not really in it too much but i, I liked it it was it was it was well done well and this is a sequel to that so yeah but i this one looks weird yeah well, I definitely do want to see Rockman though, especially since um, uh, Taron Egerton uh, actually sings. Oh, okay. See, we see. Uh, oh, now I'm th- I can't think of the what's what's the movies that he's been in the Kingsman. Yeah, the Kingsman. See, the Kingsman guy singing. Yeah, unlike Bohemian Rhapsody, where it was all dubbed over with the original. Uh, music this is him actually singing these songs and the trailers he sounds pretty dang good i mean he's no elton john that's for sure but he's not horrible well that's great yeah uh no i i, I want to see that one because i'm interested all right well let's plan for that we'll go see rocket man this week okay and possibly aladdin because i'm going to see aladdin on wednesday and i know you're probably going to go see it you're going to get drugged to it yeah, I might get, I might have to see it, but I haven't seen it yet. Well, all right, Mike. Uh, I guess that is it for this week's episode of the Real Film Nerds podcast. Hopefully, we will uh, get enough time to get back up to two. I don't know. Let us know what do you think is once enough. I mean, you know, the nice thing with the one, Mike, is we've been consistently around forty-five minutes or so, so it's a little bit longer than thirty, which is good, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, it it has been a little bit longer. We're talking more and more. So maybe maybe it's a good thing only doing one a week. I don't know. I know our numbers are suffering really bad, but I think that's just simply because we cut how many we put out a week now. I don't think that's our listen, listeners are down. I think it's just our amount of podcasts is down, and so not as many downloads. Oh, okay. So anyways, right. write us an email because uh, I still haven't gotten one of those. Have you gotten an email yet, Mike? I only get the virusy ones. Oh, okay. I only get the ones that's trying to sell me Viagra. Oh. Well, it'll lift you up. That's great, but they're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> okay. I have absolutely uh, no use for that juju. All right. I got it. So, all right, Mike. Well, that's it for me. Uh, I've done enough ranting and raving. Your turn. Do it. Take us out of here in a nice, fashionable, mean Mike Talent way. All right. Um, Yeah. Thanks, uh, everybody, for listening. And catch us on our next pod where we're going to be talking about Rocketman. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie.